Welcome to our Capital Recovery Center where we focus on two key concepts. How can we help you with your recovery today? And what does recovery mean to you? Tune in Tuesdays at 10 a.m. to our coffee and conversation meeting and Thursdays at 1 p.m. to our all recovery meeting. For updated information, follow our Capital Recovery Center Facebook page. Good morning. Welcome to our coffee and conversation. My name is Karen and I'm one of your recovery coaches. Hey, good morning. Uh, this is Craig here once again. One of your recovery coaches. <laughs> hey, good day. This is Mike here, one of your recovery coaches. Um, just a reminder for everyone, Recovery on Wheels, the road bus will be out tomorrow um, at the Wood and Slum Street in Byron. Come on out. Come on out. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll be in Byron. We'll be looking forward to help individuals. Come on out. Any other announcements? Uh, no, what about uh, we'll be here Thursday, I believe. All recovery meeting Thursday. Look for our uh spotlight recovery that's coming uh first Friday every month. And go to our capital recovery center page, and you can view all our previous spotlight recoveries. And uh, what else we got? That's it, right? Yeah, so we've been going over. The eight dimensions of wellness, we've been going over these eight different dimensions. We have already covered emotional, environmental, and financial, intellectual, and today we'll be discussing something dealing with occupational. So the reason why we're going over the eight dimensions of wellness is because uh, there is more to it than just removing the substance that people are struggling with. There is a whole part, whole person that we want to try to help in every area of their lives. And even if you don't need, um, there are some things you might be strong in, uh, even if you're struggling with uh, a, a substance or not, but some areas you might already be strong in. So you can just take the uh, advice that we have and um, move on from there. So today we're going to talk about occupational. I'm going to read a little snippet right here. Engaging in a meaningful works allows you to live out your value, whether it's a day job, going to school, or volunteering. Doing work that you are passionate about can make you feel more meaningful. Plus, if you do work you love, you'll have another reason to feel excited when you wake up in the morning. I got to be honest with you. I do feel the same way. It's not that days you don't feel like going to work. That's different from waking up and saying, oh, my goodness, I got to go to work. <laughs> There's totally two different things. Sometimes you can get into a particular occupation that you love to do, and you can find excitement about going to do it. And that doesn't mean you don't have days where you don't feel like going to work. Uh, I'm talking about you know, occupation or you working at a place where the, you get to walk in your particular calling. All right, so we're going to talk about occupational today. Uh, let's see where we at. Let's see. We can start right here. Yeah. Finding employment and recovery from addiction. This came from uh, arcbh.com website. You can look it up, ARKBH.com website. They got uh, more information on there for dealing with substance use disorder. Drug and alcohol abuse can have far-reaching effects on all aspects of a person's life, like we just was mentioning, including a person's employment and job, job prospects. In the midst of an active struggle with an addiction, people who misuse drugs or alcohol may struggle to hold a job. I wonder why. <laughs> Seeking treatment for drug and alcohol abuse can also complicate the process. Taking the steps to re-enter the workplace after seeking substance use treatment in the rehab program is one of several challenges a person might face in early recovery. This is so good right here that I can't, I got to pull over, pause, and pause. When you um, 
come from um, a inpatient treatment center, or even if you're an outpatient, but you change changing your lifestyle, it's going to be challenges that you face dealing with employment or occupational situations. So don't get discouraged if you start in the process of your lifestyle change and you find barriers or you find these things challenging. Don't think it's something foreign, <laughs> meaning you're the first person that it happened to. This is something that a lot of individuals face. That's why we have here, man, Craig was talking about yesterday is building relationships with employers. And the reason why we was thinking about or talking about building relationships with employers is because if we build relationships with these particular employers around our county, we might be better uh, suited to refer somebody from Capital Recovery Center and one of the recoveries to these organizations. But in, for, before we can do that, we have to first build relationships with the employer. Finding gainful employment after completing the drug rehab program can be an intimidating process. For some, it can also be overwhelming, depending on your employment history, if you have a criminal record and other personal factors. These are all things that sometimes make individuals shy away from trying to apply for jobs because of criminal history or lack of an employment history or other things like that. More than 23 million adults or 10% of American adults in 2012 identified as being in recovery from drug or alcohol abuse fear of stigma and concerns about the stress of new employment is common among adults in early recovery who are seeking to re-enter the workplace remember i just said that you were you, i just said that you're you're not alone remember so this is encouraging we got some here. this is encouraging that um that you're do you 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 that you're not alone helps you or give you hope that when you're faced with these situations you're faced with these challenges and you know that this has happened to people who were before you then it's kind of gives you some hope all right let's see let me finish him up in this step-by-step -step guide, you will find these particular bullets. Suggestions, suggested steps for finding employment after rehabilitation. Common challenges faced by people in early re addiction recovery who are seeking work. Recovery-based resources for finding gainful employment. And considerations to keep in mind as you begin the job search process. One of the most key bullets right there is consideration to keep in mind as you begin the job search process all right but all right let's 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 just dive into it let's go steps for finding employment after rehab if you have just completed a drug rehab program one of your first goals in early recovery might be to find employment why not because we, we like to empower people here you know, one of our things that here we like to get people back, you know, immaculated, not immaculated, but back integrated, integrated into the workforce. While some people who enter an addiction treatment program have a job waiting for them afterward, this is not true for everyone. Mm, it's good. Everyone is not as fortunate as those who have a job waiting on them. So some people may have uh been working on a job site and develop a uh, addiction or something, yeah. and they probably had to go to a rehab and the employee was uh, willing to hire them once they complete the process. So, all right. Re-entering the workforce and early recovery can offer meaning, purpose, and powerful, and a powerful sense of accomplishment. Let me read that again. Re-entering the workforce in early recovery can offer meaning, purpose, and a powerful sense of accomplishment. That doesn't mean that finding a job or managing the stress of employment in early recovery is easy. It's challenging. Definitely. Trust me, it's very challenging. It can be frustrating. It can be overwhelming, as the article mentioned before. Don't give up. You know, if that job is not uh, what 
you know, it's a fight and very uh, challenging or overwhelming. Don't quit. Don't quit. That's all I can say. However, if you or a loved one is newly sober and looking for a job, consider these suggested steps for finding gainful employment after an addiction rehab program. Number one. Number one. Did you bring your number? No. no. Strengthen your resume. Before submitting any job applications, you might need to return to your resume to update your employment history or add new skills. A strong resume can be the foundation of a successful job application. Make sure your listed skills reflect your current skill set. You might consider highlighting life skills you were able to cultivate in a treatment program. Mm. For instance, strong communication skills, a strong work ethic, and astute decision making. That's interesting. Yeah. Make sure your highest level of education is clearly shown and that there aren't any inaccurate gaps in your employment history. Ask a friend or family member to help you if you're struggling to remember details about previous employment or if you're unsure where to start with your resume. Updating a resume can be a great time for self reflection. <laughs> I just want to touch on something. Me and Mike were talking about it. Wow. And we were talking about when, because I am a, a person who was incarcerated and what? we went to rehab. And so when I started putting in the resume, <laughs> me and Mike were talking about it, we listed some of the things that we did when we were incarcerated. When we were incarcerated. Just with this thing. Right. Fill in the gaps. Yeah, you fill in. I highlighted the skills I used when I was incarcerated. Yeah. So on my resume, I we was yeah, we was literally talking about that. I said, man, do you know the jobs I did when I was incarcerated? I listed on my resume. Absolutely. <laughs> because those those are things that you have either developed, yeah. learned, and a lot of times most people I didn't know until someone brought it to my attention and said, you know. What did you do while you was away? And yeah. so, and I incorporated that, and that helped me uh, explain the time frame. Yeah. But that's good that it said highlight the life skills you were able to cultivate in the treatment program. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you wouldn't think that you'll be able to use that. When really, um, I always use something that came from my past to push me into my destiny. That's the actual way I say it. Use something from your past to push you instead of it holding me down. Mm -hmm. I want to use it to motivate me because some people can go on a real long tantrum about, oh, this was bad and this was bad. I mean, you could go on for all that for a long time, or you can actually use that difficult situation to push you ahead. So highlight some of the skills you learned while you were in treatment. Don't worry about, you know, I was in rehab and I'm trying to get this job. Okay. Use whatever you learned while you were there, put that on your resume, and use it to push you forward. What was that? The bullet. Do, okay, during this process, ask yourself the following questions. What kinds of jobs do you want to apply for? Uh, another thing Craig was uh, mentioning before, he said he has two resumes, right? I have two. Yeah, yeah okay, so, so he has one mm -hmm. listed for the these particular jobs he wanted to apply for, and he has another one that he has made it for these particular jobs. So when it says, what kinds of jobs do you want to apply for? You can do the exact same thing. Put all this, the history of the jobs you're applying for on this resume, and then have another one. <laughs> yeah, I just want to share with them is that one is for a labor uh job field that mm -hmm. i have certain skills for vocation or whatever it may be forklift driving yeah and then there is one uh from a professional yeah what we do here <laughs> is you know recovery call so it makes that it's, it's perfect you yeah. know what i mean so this is saying what kind of jobs do you want to apply for it's important do you want to limit your job search for jobs you are already qualified for or do you want to open up yourself do you want to open yourself up to new opportunities? You want to stretch out. You know what I mean? You want to try something different. You never did it before. Do you feel confident in your ability to handle the initial stress of a job that might differ from your previous employment? So when you step in into something new or another way to put it, you going outside your comfort zone, 
you got to understand there's going to be some stressful times. The first time I, I had to like learn something with a computer, I'm very, I, I learned a lot now, but when I first had to do it, I was sweating. I was like, man, I don't know why I took this job. <laughs> and, and one of our first tutors that I learned was Mavis. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man, so a lot. Okay. <laughs> Never know. What are your main priorities in your job search? Does your job listing outline clear guidelines for the responsibility of the position? What benefits does the job offer? Does the job offer opportunities for growth? This is important. These are questions you want to know. Is the job flexible or structured? Where do you want to be in the next five to ten years in your career? How can you make sure your job search reflects that vision? Remember, you got to always ask these particular questions when you're talking about strengthening your resume. If you're having trouble creating a strong resume, consider checking out the many digital resources that are available for resume building online. You can get them all over. I like um, I like um, Indeed.com because you can create your resume on there and print it out and change it and everything. Like literally, you can build your resume on there, print it out, and they only and you can do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, if you're not familiar with these little things, flash drive, make sure you get one of these. Put it on there. Put it, download it just in case. You know, if you lose, you always have this as a backup plan. Remember, we're going over the occupational part of the eight dimensions of wellness. We're talking about the eight dimensions of wellness, and we're going over occupational the section is because it's very difficult when you're coming from one lifestyle and a lot of times people don't have problems working but when they trying to go through the process of change they run into barriers to get back into the workforce field number two uh let's see you want me to i'm gonna reach out to you Fred. look to your existing network when it comes to searching for employment who you know can be almost as important if not more so than what you know that is what your resume alone can tell a recruit a recruit building a new relationship and mending existing relationship is one of the hallmark steps in addiction recovery you're likely to develop connection with other people and recovery counselors and others involved in your addiction treatment and believe it or not these connections can be a useful asset for job searches. And I believe we talked about this before I made mention because when I used to go to AA and NA meetings, I used to run into different people, different walks of life that had uh, these jobs. And I was wondering, I'm like, wow, you know, how can I get one of those jobs? And so by you know networking and communicating with people in these type of settings, you know you never know who you might run into, where you can plug into, like it says, counselors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hey, you, you, he's a prime example. Uh, I remember us having a speaker and engagement at the college, Cumberland County College, and um, I remember before we shared this, uh, before we spoke, I remember telling Craig. I said, yo, when you get up there, when you talk, just talk. And there's so many people were in this meeting that are in powerful positions. And I'm like, yo, just, just say whatever you guys say. And not soon after he came from off that uh, uh, podium, yeah. people, other directors was coming up to him like, job offers. Job offers. Yeah. But, I I, yo, it was, I was, one. and he got, I was like, yo, I told you, I was, because it's what it says right here, look to your existing network. Who do you know can be almost as important? And then it says building new relationships. When he got up there and he shared everything like what he was going through or where he was, soon as he came off of that podium and we start walking around mingling, directors and people in organization positions came up to him and said, y'all want to hire you. And he's literally got the job. <laughs> I said, I think real talk, real, real talk. talk, like, and I was on the court and I was on the panel with him. That's right. And and not only was that an awesome thing, because the three people on the panel, we all work together now. Yeah, yeah. You already employed with me. Uh, <laughs> now I'm back. We all work together. 
together. But that's why this is important about building new relationships. So don't discredit yourself uh, uh, when you're at certain situations or when you're around different networks. You got to, who you know is important. You might know somebody and they know somebody. So it's very important that you open your mouth and share with them, you know, I'm looking for some employment, man. I would like to get into that field, this, that, and third. And then that person might know somebody and can mention it to somebody else like that. Um, yeah. and so Melissa was one of the primary, also was a, a, a good advocate as well. Yeah, yeah. Because he was telling them, you know, People wouldn't want, didn't want to hire me because of certain reasons. Yeah. I think she was an advocate, you know, for encouraging me, giving me the motivation yeah. to uh, be able to share. All right, referrals from friends. All right, there you go. Come Referral on, come on. From friends, <laughs> former co-workers who can attest to your skills and new connections you'll develop throughout your treatment process may help you get your foot in the door. There you go. For an interview. Or a job. Oh, God. We're good, right? Right into, right. like, we're not just, we reading it, but we have personal experiences of it actually happening. Yeah, we ain't making this up. This is, yeah. uh, so it says, people in your life who understand where you are, where you've been, and your commitment towards contributing as a productive member of society may be able to connect you with job opportunities. They may also be able to serve as credible references. Mm. Your network may be larger than you think. Cash your net wide. If you're living in recovery housing, ask the house manager if they'll be willing to attest to your trustworthiness as a reference. Mm -hmm. If you're active in recovery support groups or in a 12 step group, there you go. Ask your sponsor or any and other participant if they have suggestions on how to find employment. That's good stuff. That's good stuff, man. You got to understand these situations looking to your existing networks. You have to branch out when you, when I always say lifestyle change, when you're going through the early recovery stages of your lifestyle change, networking is very important. Talk to people, you know, you might have a job that you're not really, uh, that you want to get out of. Make, just keep that job. My mom always said, don't never leave a job no. unless you had a job. You don't, you don't do, I left like three jobs and she said, what you got another one? I said, nah. She said, so you left that job without another job? I said, yes. Yeah. She said, don't never do that. <laughs> you wait, wait till you get a job. And I was out of work for months after that. She said, that's why you don't do it. You just thinking you're going to get hired, but it sometimes don't go that way. So where we at? Number three. Number three. Oh, wow. I'm confused. Oh, I'm not here. Take advantage of job searching resources and assistance. Look to an existing network to help you find employment or building a network is only one resource that can be helpful in searching for a job. I got a tip that um, me and I was just talking about my mother. My mother will always tell me, don't just go to jobs where you see signs that says I'm hiring. Go to jobs and just ask, are they hiring? Because sometimes they have a bad employee and they didn't show up that day. And that boss said, you know what? I wasn't hiring, but this is the last time that this person. <laughs> and I got jobs like that. I came, I just went. It didn't say help wanted. I just went and somebody, the boss was like, you know what? No call, no show. This is it. You hired, sir. And just different off the cuff strategy that that's a free tip man i charge you later catch that <laughs> there are a number of job searches resources that job related assistance program that exist to help people find gainful employment and early recovery from addiction uh all right the national hire network for instance can be an invaluable resource for people with early re addiction recovery who have a criminal record. We got to save that. Somebody write that down. So we don't forget. Uh, this program recognizes the many barriers and challenges people with a criminal record can face in job searching process. It works to expand the valuable job opportunities for this population and advocates for policies that support their re-entry into the workplace. This is a good resource for us to uh, get. Make sure y'all go check that out, the National Hire Network. National Hire Network. 
Uh, additional job related resources and assistance program for people in recovery from drug addictions include the Department of Labor One Stop Career Center. Every county, I believe, has those. Yeah. America in Recovery, Jobs for Felons Hub. This is some good stuff here, man. We're going to give y'all the links to this. That's what I'm going to put it in the comment section for you guys. Uh, local unemployment offices of government job search assistance programs, online job boards created by local and state health agencies, spring wires, community voicemail services. These resources serve to expand access to workforce training for people in recovery from substance misuse, increase job opportunities, promote recovery friendly policies in the workplace. So this is all good stuff for you guys. This is good stuff for all of us. Add this to our resource. Huh? Yeah, we can add this to our resource, our arsenal. Remember, we, we were going over the eight well dimensions of wellness, and today we were talking about occupational, which is one of the difficulty things that people face in early recovery is going back into the work field. A lot of us have skills. But when we come in off of that lifestyle that we just was not focused on the skills we had. So occupational is another uh, area of barrier. And a lot of times we hear people say, oh, they ain't not going to harm me because I have a criminal background. What do you say? I tell them that's not true. Yeah. You know, I let them know. I say, you know, only thing you, I'm going to tell you what someone told me. She's, and this is my ex uh, supervisor. She said, listen, if you get, you only need but one yes. If you get nine no, only thing you need is one yes. That's so it. That, that's what she was basically telling me. When you're going out looking for a job, don't give up. Just keep going until you get that yes. And so I try to encourage people to let them know, like, listen, if I can do it, you can you can do it as well you just got to make sure you are uh, everybody's going to need an opportunity yeah. that's that's all you need just i tell all the people that i'm able to tell is whenever you get the opportunity cherish it because yeah. i once i came home um my past they gave didn't have a job for me but they made a position for me and he gave me that position i shook his hand and said thank you all I needed was the opportunity and the rest was still being written. But you're gonna need somebody to give you an opportunity, but cherish the opportunity you get because it's possible yeah. that it'll be a long time before somebody else give right. it to you. And you don't wanna mess up the you next don't want come to come yeah. 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 And just think the position that my pastor gave to me uh, almost 12 years ago, turned into three positions for somebody now. It's three yeah. people doing a job that it, that wasn't a job. They made it a position. <laughs> so that's awesome. So we see you guys Thursday at 1 p.m. with our all recovery meeting. And we'll finish part two of occupational. Take care, guys. All right. Happy Tuesday.